morning, everyone. My name is Carl Griffith, and I want to welcome you to our G2 Talk seminar series uh, this morning. Uh, we're glad to have David uh, Shell with us, the principal engineer from Fluke Networks, to talk to us about uh, uh, the testing of uh, high-speed fiber optics inside our data centers. Uh, as the world moves towards 40 gig and 100 gig, this becomes a very important subject to us, and uh, we think it will be a good topic uh, uh, for you. Uh, before we get started, I'd just like to give you a little bit of information about Graybar. Graybar is a leading distributor uh, that provides the materials and solutions necessary to construct or redesign, rebuild, or maintain data centers. And uh, the competences, competencies we have there around power and cooling, around connectivity, uh, security, lighting, automation, et cetera. Our mission statement is on the screen. We like to help our customers power network and secure facilities with speed, intelligence, and efficiency. Um, in this particular case, our facility is a data center. Uh, our uh, session today will last uh, 30 minutes, and then we'll have a 10-minute Q&A. Uh, the first 50 people that log on will get an email a little later this afternoon, uh, and they'll be able to enjoy a uh, caffeinated beverage from a large uh, uh, coffee company in the United States, uh, they'll get an email for that, and we are glad to offer that up to you uh, for joining us today on the seminar. So the first 50 people look for an email. Without any further hesitations, uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, our, uh, our uh, presenter today. His name is uh, David Shaw, and he's a principal engineer uh, with Fluke Networks. So uh, thank you very much, uh, David, for joining us. And, uh, and we'd like you to have a, uh, have a good presentation. So thank you very much for your time. Go ahead, Dave. Thank you, Carl. And uh, good morning to everyone. Thanks for joining us. As Carl mentioned, I'm part of the uh, Fluke Networks engineering team and have the exciting role of developing new test and measurement solutions for fiber, uh, fiber testing. Uh, for a while now, data centers have been deploying OM3, OM4 trunks with MPO connectors for high-speed applications. But until now, there's never been a good way to test these deployments. So what I want to talk about today is uh, just a quick review of MPO connector and what you may see in the field that then give you an introduction to polarity, talk about how testing is achieved today on trunks, and then introduce a new way to do it. This is just to provide a little background on MPO for those that may be new to the connector or just need a little background. Uh, it is an array connector. It's most commonly found in a 1 by 12 array, although you can find it in other configurations as well. The acronym is Multifiber Push-On connector, and it is defined by the IEC uh, TIA MPO standards. Um, the M MTP connector, it is a type of MPO connector. It's fully compliant. Uh, MTP is a particular brand of US Connect, and they are interchangeable because they're both standards compliant. A little more about the MPO. Uh, you can see what it looks like here. Um, you'll have one row of 12 fibers. The connectors are pinned, male and female. Uh, so you have to be careful about mating uh, the, the right gender to, to one another. Additionally, the adapters are keyed. So you might have a key up, key up adapter. You might have a key up, key down adapter. And again, this is important for maintaining the correct polarity. So what might you find in the field today? Uh, obviously, there are many pre-terminated, factory-polished, factory-terminated uh, trunk cables that are uh, terminated with MPO connectors. Uh, more commonly, though, we're finding field-terminated trunks as well. These are field-spliced MPO pigtails. The argument for using these is that the fiber can be cut to length without waste or without uh, having to use large service loops. 
Also, you'll find in the field that today's multimode data center applications all run 850 nanometers. And of course, you'll find cassettes and patch cords and all flavors of uh, polarity and genders. Commonly, people are going to ask, why should we even bother testing MPO connectors? Um, the answer remains pretty much the same as with any other type of connector. After extensive handling uh, during installation, testing is required to ensure that the links are going to support the performance and the warranty requirements. You'll also want to verify polarity and document the as-built conditions. Uh, and of course, issues are going to arise, so troubleshooting is always necessary. So in the next few slides, uh, I'm going to take you through a very brief introduction to MPO polarity. MPO polarity is confusing, and I don't expect that I'll clear up much confusion at the end of this, but at least we'll have some introduction to it. Um, there are several types of polarities, and, and that is the main reason that uh, the confusion exists. Uh, which polarity am I installing? What does it take to maintain that polarity? And the three types are type A, which is a straight through with a key up, key down polarity. So you can see the, the patch cord there has a twist in it to maintain uh, the polarity of transmit to receive. Type B is a key up, key up polarity that's uh, also straight through. And then type C is a pairwise flip, so each each pair is flipped, and it's a key up, key down polarity. Um, as I said, a lot of stuff here probably uh, not much clearer than what began, but at least we have an introduction of what they are. Uh, to further complicate things, if you take as an example a type A channel, the permanent link consists of all type A uh, parts. So you'll have a type A trunk, you'll have type A pa uh, adapters in the patch panel. But then on, on the outside, when you connect to the equipment, you need a type A patch cord and a type B patch cord. So you have to mix the patch cords in the field and you have to ensure that you get the, the right ones on the right end. Uh, all of this confusion can be mitigated with the, the right type of test equipment, and I want to show you how to how how it's tested today. We'll call that the old way, and then we'll show you the new way of testing. Uh, the equipment that you need for testing the old way is shown here: power meter, light source, uh, cleaning equipment, uh, breakout cables, various uh, LC patch cords, adapters. And I'm going to run through this very quickly because it's not this is not the the procedure that I want you to remember. This is the the old difficult way, but I want to just uh, give you a, an example of what what it takes. So the first thing you would do is you take your power meter and light source and set your reference, and then you're going to disconnect the patch cord from your power meter. You're going to add in a a good uh, patch cord to the power meter. But we don't know if that patch cord is actually good, so we need to measure the loss of that patch cord. <clears throat> Once we measure the loss and know that it's uh, low loss, we take a reference. So this is the second reference that we take, and we do this because we, we're going step by step, uh, making sure that each component we add into the test uh, link is, is good. Now we're going to disconnect and then insert another patch cord. Again, we don't know that this patch cord is good, so we need to take a measurement and find out that it is good. We certainly want to see low loss, but negative loss here would be uh, incorrect, and we know that we did something incorrect in the previous steps. So now that we know that the patch cord is good, we take a reference a third time. Then we remove that middle patch cord, and we're now getting ready to the point where we can go test the trunk. First, we have to take the 
fan out cables, connect those to the trunk, uh, attach our adapters to the to the fan out, and arrange the fan out so that we can easily find fiber one, fiber two, all the way through fiber twelve. So we have to test each one individually, and then connect our power meter or our light source to one end, usually to fiber one, and then to connect the power meter to the um, to the fiber from which the source light is going to exit. Now that might be uh, that might be fiber one. <clears throat> if it's a type B, it might be fiber twelve. If if it's a type A, and it might be fiber two. If it's a uh, type C. So you have to know which polarity and where to find the thing. And then you're going to step-by-step step test each one of the 12 fibers. Measure it, record it, make sure that you've uh, recorded the correct location, and um, go through all 12. It takes a while. So we found that's a hassle. The the industry found that that's a hassle. And they told us so. The industry told us we need an efficient method of testing MPOs. <clears throat> they told us that it's uh, uh, just incredibly painful to test with a power meter and light source, that uh, providing warranties are difficult because the links aren't tested properly or not tested at all. And when something fails, I have no good way of troubleshooting. We found that what's needed is some sort of device that has 12 light sources, 12 power meters, all built into one unit, and it'll test loss, it'll test polarity, it'll coordinate all this testing into a single results management uh, ease of use uh, feature set. And so that's what we did at Flute Networks. We created this new power meter light source called the Multifiber Pro. The power meter features a non-contact 12 fiber interface. It has a display of all 12 measurements as well as the details of any one of the 12 fibers. It saves 12 fibers with a uh, single push of the, the save button, does polarity measurements, and it tests the measurements against limits. The source is uh, likewise has a MPO interface for 12 fibers. It auto-scans all 12 fibers at once, and it provides uh, indication of which of the 12 uh, other fibers is being tested. It also uh, has the polarity testing feature. So testing an MPO trunk couldn't be easier, as you can see with the setup we have here. Just connect the permanent link to the tester through two type B patch cords, press the test button, and you're done. Um, so as not to make this uh, presentation too short, uh, with the simplicity of this, I'll go through a little more detail here. Um, specifically, with this tester, you, you set a limit. Uh, as, as uh, instructed by probably your uh, trunk manufacturer, but you might base that limit based on application loss budgets or the warranty specification or whatever your end customer is telling you to set it to. And then you set a one jumper reference. You connect a, the power meter to the light source with a single type B jumper. You press uh, the Set Reference button, and when you do this, all 12 channels are referenced at the same time. Next, you disconnect the test jumper from the power meter. You add in the additional jumper to the power meter and connect to the trunk that you're going to test. Six seconds later, the meter will provide all the measurements for all 12 fibers. Uh, you can individually look at each fiber. You can look at the graphical display and find that 
if uh, all fibers are below the limit line, then you press save and all 12 fibers are, are saved. If uh, one of them happens to be above the limit line, it'll tell you which one and you can go troubleshoot that one if you need to. Or save it for later and uh, come back to it and re retest and troubleshoot later. And that is the, uh, the end of the story for testing. You take the new Multifiber Pro and you can do that in 20 seconds. And testing the, whole, the, the old way, we found is six and a half minutes per trunk. So you can see, you can greatly cut your test time uh, with, with over over uh, time. You can greatly save a lot of money there testing with the Multifiber Pro. Uh, 20 seconds for one one trunk. And that's about it. It's a new way to test multi MPO trunks. It's easy to understand, it's easy to do, and it's fast. Um, I actually went a little faster than I thought we would today. Uh, I'd like to open it up for any questions that you might have. Uh, Dave, if you look in your QA panel, there's a question here, and I'll read it out loud to, so everybody can see it. It says, I have a 4100 gig project I'm, I'm doing right now, and we're using the Systemax MPO cassette that accepts a 2 by 12 MPO, but hands off 3 by 8 fiber MPO. Can this tester test 8 fiber configuration? Yes, that's a great question. It's actually something that uh, uh, we've had uh, many customers ask, and the answer is yes, it can test that. Um, the the standard configuration is that uh, it, the three by eight uses actually uses uh, a twelve fiber MPO, but does not populate the the center uh, four fibers, so it only populates the the outer outer eight, I should say. And when you do that, um, you'll you read a high loss on the center eight. I'm sorry, goodness. You read a high loss on the center four, but there's that's to be expected in that kind of application. So yes, it definitely will test that uh, particular application. And uh, Dave, this is my question. I, in the presentation, when you showed uh, the hookup to the uh, the, new, the tester. Uh, we showed it with a launch cable that was type B. Is that the only launch cable that will work as a type B, or will it work with an A or a C? We provide type B connectors in the test kits, and the reason is if you – we want to keep things simple. So if you use the test jumpers that we provide, uh, it will keep things simple. Uh, using type B will provide you with the correct polarity measurements every time – no matter what type of trunk you're testing. If you use a different, uh, if you use your own test cords and they're not type B, you may find that the polarity measurements are incorrect. So uh, keep it simple. Use type B pa uh, patch cords when you're testing uh, permanent links. We have another question here. Um, again, you can look at these in your control panel, Dave. but. Uh, can we test a 24 fiber variation of MPOs and MTPs? Absolutely, uh, 24 fiber can be tested. In the case with 24 fiber, uh, most of the applications that we've seen with 24 fiber are uh, similar to the question we had earlier, where they they break it out into three eight fiber MPOs uh, because it's more efficient. Uh, but if you want to test the 24 fiber trunk directly, then what you have to do is use a uh, 24 fiber to 2 by 12 fiber breakout. So you lose some efficiency there uh, relative to testing 12 fiber connectors, but uh, it's still a great gain of efficiency relative to testing each individual fiber one by one. There's another question about single mode. Do we have a single mode solution here? We do not have a single mode solution for MPO. Um, we found that that's a, a pretty uh, small market, but we are getting more questions about that, so we're adding that to our roadmap uh, as 
investigation, and I'll certainly get back to uh, to that question and, and try to get more information about the application. Okay, so single to kind of clear that up, single mode's in your future, but it's not here just yet. Yes, we're investigating single mode for for future applications. All right. Another question came in about this whole this this whole uh, thing about referencing, and the question says this: After referencing with the MultiFiber Pro, should you connect the two reference cables to ensure that the added cable is low loss, as you did with the first test method? Um, really excellent questions today. Uh, that's another one. Ideally, you would do that. The problem is with MPOs is that they are uh, because of the gender, you you cannot directly connect those two reference cables together. We do have a method that is specified in our um, our user's guide that will walk you through a way to test and ensure that the uh, the reference cables are good. And we provide the cables there for you. Essentially, what you have to do is add a third short jumper in there and verify that the loss measured through that is good. All right, another question came in and it talks about uh, non-MPO testing. So the question goes like this. This unit can be used for non-MPO trunks by utilizing burst cable and, the, and then there's a, is that correct? In other words, can you effectively test 12 fibers at a time if they're non-MPO? It can be used for uh, single fiber testing like uh, LC uh, or SC connectors. So yes, um, it can be used. Uh, whether or not it's actually more efficient to test that way or, or testing with, say, the DTX is uh, debatable depending on it depends on the application, I have to say, and, and we would w want to work with you directly to try to figure out if it's more uh, efficient for you to use the DTX or more efficient to use the Multifiber Pro. The reason I say that it may be less efficient is if you're testing uh, 12 single fibers at a time, you still have to use a breakout cable and go through the the difficulty of organizing each of the 12 breakouts at one time and make sure you get those connected to the right place. Great, thanks. There was also a question about the cost of the unit. Uh, evidently, somebody's investigated how much it would cost to do this, and they come up with a pretty big number. Uh, do you have a manufacturer's suggested list price on this unit, Dave? Well, being, being an engineer, I'm not... Uh, I don't have all the, the numbers there, and, and I certainly ask that you check with your gray bar guy. Um, I believe it's going to be in the $10,000 range for okay. a, a, a kit that includes a power meter and light source. And uh, if you compare that to what you may have to do today or you had to do before this product, you'll find that it's uh, significantly cheaper. All right, and, and that's a good point. While we're talking about that, I would want to remind everybody that's on the call uh, that Graybar offers Graybar Financial Services, which uh, permits you to put together a lease program. So rather than pay for the test equipment all at once, you can pay for the test equipment incrementally over several months or a year or two. So those programs are available from Graybar, and I suggest you talk to your Graybar sales representative to see how you could fit this into your individual budget and extend the payments over a period of time using Graybar Financial Services. Um, there's another question that came in, uh, Dave, about uh, uh, the DTX. Are there going to be some modules available that can plug on to the DTX and we can get the same functionality there? Well, as a uh, self-professed lab rat, I, I love the idea of doing that. Um, the, the development of that sure would be exciting. I, I can't commit that we would do that in the future, but uh, we're always looking for good new ideas like this. So uh, we'll take take it down and, and study the idea. Okay. And similar to a previous question we had, uh, would you use this for MPO LC trunks or 
would you use other tester that might be more efficient? Yeah, I think uh, I think the the, the court, that that sounds very similar to the other question. And again, uh, we'd have to look at it on a case by case basis. If you have a MPO LC situation, I think where you have MPO on one end and LC on the other end, I think the uh, Multifiber Pro is going to end up being a better solution than other solutions that we might be able to offer. Mm -hmm. Another question came in, and I, I think we may have answered this, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'm going to just ask it again, Dave. If the test leads used are type A, uh, can the tester be configured to provide accurate results regarding the trunk polarity? Um, I, I, I'm pausing as I think about the question, and I don't think I can give a positive answer at this time. I'm not positive that it can provide accurate results. Uh, okay. Type so B is what is configured to to work with. Um, if uh, if 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 this person needs to use Type A, I encourage them to get in touch with us directly, and we will we will check it out for them. All right. That polarity question seems like a good one. That might be something to put on the roadmap for Rev, but I like that one too. And uh, again, there's, there continues to come in questions about uh, uh, functionality with the DTX, and there was a comment, I'm going to pass it on to you, Dave, uh, that a single, single mode uh, MTP head for the DTX would be highly desirable according to one of our, uh, one of our clients, one of our customers. So uh, if you're looking for feedback, you got this DTX thing along with single mode capability, just passing it along. Mm -hmm. we, okay. have a few more, we have a few more minutes. If anybody else has a question, type it in the chat box and we'll be sure to respond to it. Is there another question? As I see lot, lots, of, uh, lots of support for DTX testing. We'll certainly yeah, take that are. under consideration. Well, I want to thank you, uh, Dave, for uh, giving us this excellent information about uh, MTP testing, uh, MPO testing. This is absolutely great. We know that this kind of stuff is moving into the data center. Uh, it's important for us to understand it. The questions today were just absolutely outstanding. This is a great format to you for folks to get directly to the manufacturer and provide feedback. It helps get these revs out into the marketplace quicker. I'm sure Dave is, uh, is very appreciative to get the uh, information that was uh, 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 gathered today as a, or as a result of the Q&A. I want to remind everybody that the first 50 people will get an email for a cup of coffee, and we're glad to do that. I'd like to remind everybody that we'll continue to do these seminars with a data center flavor uh, the third Thursday of every month. Uh, look in your email basket for some more, uh, uh, for more sessions. It'll provide more information. If you'd like to see some advanced titles of what these presentations will be, you can always go to graybar.com and select the events tab, and you'll be able to get a whole list of all the seminars and when they'll be held. Uh, we appreciate your time today. We especially thank Dave for uh, being with us today from Fluke Networks. If you have a question about any of this product or you'd like to uh, make a purchase, that would be great. <laughs> uh, just contact your Graybar sales rep representative. We'd be more than happy to accommodate you. Thanks, everyone. Y'all have a great day. Welcome to uh, G2 Talk from Graybar.